Chapter 31. I told Hal and his daddy what Kit and I had been doing. Mr. Mitchell drove along and smiled at my stories and drank from his whiskey bottle. After a while, he pulled off the road and got out of the truck and walked around the passenger side. Hale slid over and got behind the wheel. Hill gonna drive us, I asked. Boy can drive a bus, he sure enough he can sure enough drive my truck for me, Mr. Mitchell said as he climbed back in. We crossed the Black Warrior River and I stared down at the muddy water below. Remind me of the Cedar Bluff overlooking the Nuxibi <clears throat> River where Mama and Papa were buried. I make it out before it got cold on you, Hal. Barely, I followed the creek like you said and come out on the road about dark. Some old fellow came along and let me ride with him. He was pretty jumpy about all those dogs crammed in his car. He was eyeing me like he knew I was up to something. <clears throat> I finally got him to drop me off at a place I recognized and I walked the rest of the way. I don't think he figured out anything about who I was because ain't nobody been to daddy's looking for me. We parked near Clearwater Creek, just outside of a town we called Clinton. Mr. Mitchell dug around in his toolbox until he found a can of Spam. Hale pulled the loaf of bread from behind the seat, and we made lunch on the tailgate. It had been a long time since I'd had my meat with fat in it, and I was sorry there wasn't a whole can just for me. Mr. Mitchell's place outside of Union was just how I pictured it would be, from Hale's description. His trailer was old and yellowed and had tires on top to keep the wind from blowing the roof off. The bloodhounds came running around the corner and jumped up and scraped at the truck. <clears throat> I don't guess you'll be needing a place to put your things, will you, Moon? <clears throat> no, sir, I don't have any things. They showed me mattress I could sleep on in Hal's room and said it was the best they had to give me. The little wiener dog was already lying on it, and she looked at me like she wasn't giving up her spot. She's going to get mad at me? Nah, Hale said. Just scoot her over. She'll get under the covers with you at night. She gets. She likes getting under things and crawling in holes. Daddy had to dig her out of an armadillo hole last week. She was down there for two days. She get it? Heck yeah, she got it, Mr. Mitchell said. Them dogs is crazy. She got dead squirrels laying all over the yard like dog dish rags. What's her name? Says Daisy on the tag. I lay down on the mattress beside Daisy. Next to lying on leaves and red bugs, this feels pretty good. <clears throat> Mr. Mitchell nodded at me and walked towards the room at the end of the hall. I'll see you boys later, he said. Hell told me his daddy usually took a long nap in the afternoon and we'd see him for supper and bottle shooting later. He showed me where the bathroom was and gave me everything I needed for a shower. How many bugs do you think you got in here? Probably a bunch, I said. Daddy ain't gonna like bugs getting in the mattress. He already got in, on to the winter dog about fleas. Well then, <clears throat> I reckon we ought to shave it all off after I take a shower. Spring's about here anyway. I used some soap they had for cleaning grease off your hands and scrubbed the dirt off me. My fingernails and toenails had pine sap under them and we used gasoline to soften it and then scraped it out with a pocket knife. After that, Hal gave me some of his old clothes to wear in place of my Pinson uniform. I pulled on the blue jeans and a t-shirt that said Mo Brett Bandy on it and looked at Hal. Fit pretty good, I told him. Yeah, last time I used them, I was about your size. Mr. Mitchell had mashed some wooden crates into the mud and covered them with plywood for a front porch. Hal seen some chairs up for us set some chairs up for us, and ran an extension cord out of the trailer to plug his daddy's electric razor into. As he shaved my head, I looked out over the clay pit and let the hair fall over my shoulders and into my lap. I can see why he likes this place, I said. You can shoot guns all day long out here. No, Not too many places you can shoot guns all day long. <clears throat> daddy will be awake in a while and we can set up some bottles. I nodded. Sounds good. You know, Sanders still has my rifle. Not much way to get it now. Your daddy let you take his truck by yourself? Hale stopped shaving me. Yeah, but I ain't taking you to get your gun from Sanders. How about you taking me to get Pap's gun? At your own home? Yeah. Heck with that. We're going to let the law cool off a little bit. Daddy said even if you didn't want to come back with us, we should come warn you to stay hidden for a while. 
Okay, I said we can wait a while, but I'm glad you came and got me. <clears throat> I don't want to be out there by myself anymore. Once kids gets better, I'll figure something out. You know how I can talk to him? <clears throat> he's probably too sick to talk to. When he gets better, though, the radio said what hospital he's at. We can go up to the <clears throat> laundromat and use the payphone to call in a few days. I thought he was going to die out there. I never felt so bad about something in my whole life. I should have told him to bring some medicine. You didn't know. Pap was wrong about a lot of things. You can make every kind of medicine in the forest. I can't make everything Kit needs. Chapter 32. After my haircut, Hal got some black garbage bags and started tapping them over the side truck windows with duct tape. What's that for? We just hold on, skinhead. When he was finished, we got in the truck and went riding down into the clay pit with the bloodhounds chasing behind. Once we were at the bottom, he'll mash the gas pedal as far as it would go. The back tires threw mud 50 feet behind us, and we fishtailed until I had to clutch the seat to keep from sliding across the cab. Finally, he straightened the truck, and we sped towards the opposite side. What are you doing? I yelled. Mudding. There was a long strip of mud, and in the middle of the clay pit that we hit next, and a wall of rust-colored water shot up over us. The truck slowed. And Hale gritted his teeth and floored it again. Clumps of mud clopped against the truck and covered us inch by inch until we could only see through what the windshield wiper scraped clean. Daddy made some heavy-duty wipers for us, Hale yelled. yelled. I was so excited I couldn't answer. I gripped the seat <clears throat> and held on. The tire slowly caught the ground and the water, wall of water fell, and I saw... We were still headed straight for the high clay wall of the opposite side. Just as I was about to ball up for the crash, Hell yelled, Hold on! And wiped the steering wheel with one hand. We slid sideways for about 30 feet until we slammed into the clay bank. I saw cans and buckets and trash bags fly into the air through the rear window. Hell grabbed the steering wheel with both hands and I saw his knuckles go white. Hammer down, he shouted and jabbed his right foot to the floor. We scraped the side of the bank for a few yards and then tore away from it. You're crazy, I yelled. Fun, wasn't it? You're going to bend up your truck. Daddy don't need no Sunday car. Well then, let's go again. Hell's eyes twinkled and he straightened his right leg and we tore off for the other side. The bloodhounds had almost caught up with us and we made a wide circle to give chase again. They were so covered with clay mud, all you could see were their eyes, like they'd been dipped in tomato juice. We made three runs through the clay pit before Hal said we were low on gas. We drove back up to the trailer and washed the dogs and truck down with a hose. The afternoon was go growing late, and my stomach hurt from laughing so hard. After Hal finished washing everything, he gathered up the hose and threw it on their porch. What you think about that? Most fun I ever had, I said. Hell nodded and ripped one of the garbage bags from the window. We ain't the only one that knows about stuff. What else you got? Well, we get Daddy up. He's got a machine gun from Vietnam we can shoot those bottles with. Machine gun? Yeah, real one. Let's go get him, then. Hell woke his daddy while I waited outside. Mr. Mitchell came out in his underwear with the machine gun. Hell told me about he had scars across his stomach and tattoos on his shoulder. His underwear was split and so thin that it was little more than yellow cheesecloth. Yellowed cheesecloth. Hell went around to the back of the trailer and got some empty bottles from a trash pile and stood them at the edge of the clay pit. I sat beside Mr. Mitchell on the porch and watched him load his gun. I had heard and read about machine guns, but I'd never seen one. Where can you get one of the O's? Mr. Mitchell rubbed his eyes like he was still tired. He scratched under his arms and took a while before he answered me. You just kind of ask around. Pretty loud? Mr. Mitchell nodded. Yep, especially for a man with a headache. Hale came back and stood behind us in the porch. Mr. Mitchell looked at us. Ready? Ready, I said. Mr. Mitchell jerked the machine gun up to his shoulders and I slammed my hands over my ears as it shot fire from its barrel. All the bottles seemed to blow apart at once and ran, rain down into the clay pit as he swept the battle, barrel once right and then once left. I was so excited my ears started to itch. I let my hands down and yelled out, Woohoo! 
Hale ran around the back of the trailer and I heard him picking through the trash pile for more bottles. Mr. Mental laid the gun across his legs and looked over at me. Want to try it? Heck yeah. Hell set up the new bottles and returned. I took the gun from Mr. Mitchell and brought it to my shoulders. I lined up the iron sights and put my cheeks against the stock. Now, I asked, may I can pay, Moon? I squeezed back on the trigger and the gun exploded. I let off the trigger and watched the, the one bottle I'd aimed for fall away into the clay pit. Mr. Mitchell told me to move my barrel along the line of bottles when I pulled the trigger and I could get them all. I sucked in my breath, took aim, and turned every bottle in the line to glass splinters. You are a dang good shot, boy. I told you he would be, Hale said. When it was his turn, Hale walked to the edge of the pit and fired the gun from his hip at the far side. Puffs of dust spit from the clay bank. Before he was done, a giant wall of dirt fell away and slid to the bottom. It was well after dark when Hal and I stopped shooting. Mr. Mitchell had made a seat for himself in the tailgate of the truck and drank whiskey and scratched and chuckled at us. You boys would have been heckin' numb, he said. I reckon you two gonna be itching ice in them shoulders tonight. Hal made hamburgers for supper and I'd never tasted anything better. I ate two before I sat on the sofa and held my stomach. Mr. Mitchell watched me. Touch easier... Then killing your own food, ain't it? Yes, sir, I said. Don't hurt yourself over it. You're going to blow up. You don't slow down a little bit. He always eats too much when you give him regular food. Mr. Mitchell played country music on his record player and laid back on the big chair across from me. He took a pouch of tobacco from a table beside him and stuffed some on his cheek. Hale sat on the kitchen counter and pulled his shirt off. He licked his finger and began to clean his belly button. What's today, I asked. Saturday, Hell replied. You get a lot of people coming by here to get dirt? Mr. Mitchell spit in an empty whiskey bottle beside him. Sometimes, he says, depends on what they got going on construction-wise. I bet you can make a bunch of money selling dirt. You don't ever run out, do you? Mr. Mitchell seemed to look for a few seconds. Guess you don't. We gonna go seek Kit, Hal? How are we going to do that? They catch me or you both, they're going to take us away. You, we could sneak into the hospital. He's probably not feeling better yet. Well, I hope he doesn't think I forgot about him. Hope he doesn't think I'm mad at him. I told you we'd call him in a few days. You think he'll still want to go to Alaska? Moon, what are you going to go to Alaska for? Mr. Mitchell asked me. I was about to tell him what Pat had told me, but I didn't. I didn't seem right anymore. I've just been planning on going there for a while. I told Kit I'd take him. You'd freeze up there. I don't really care where we go. I just don't want to go by myself. I'd rather live out there in that clay pit than Alaska, Mr. Mitchell said. Clay pits don't bother me. Any place you don't want to live? Pinson? Jail? Most any place where you get locked up. Makes my insides tighten up like somebody poured bad water down my throat. The wiener dog jumped into my lap. Mr. Mitchell watched it. He spit into the bottle again and said, I bet, I'll bet you Sanders' mama raised heck on him for losing that dog. I bet he got lost looking for you or for the dog. We lay in Hal's room that night with the window open because the weather was pleasant. The wiener dog nosed under the blanket with me and lay throbbing against my side. I trained my ears to listen for the night sounds, but all I heard was the rustling of pecan trees. What else do you have around here got a chainsaw but you ain't never used one of them let's go get it not now is it loud yeah loud is that machine gun no bet you don't have any many wild animals around here with all that shooting daddy don't shoot it much just when he's got company you're lucky i said i know i could ride in clay pits and shoot machine guns and eat hamburgers for a long time before i'd get tired of it Yeah, and it's good to be back with Daddy again. Yeah, I replied when the bloodhounds moaned outside the window. Hell, what? I don't miss my pap as much anymore. How come? I don't know. You think that's bad? No, I think you might have been wrong about a lot of things. About wanting you to live out there in the forest? I like living in the forest. I don't know where else I'd live, but I don't want to be by myself. We were always by ourselves. We don't ever, we didn't ever see anybody except Mr. Averscado. Why don't you stop thinking about everything so much? You reckon Kit's all right? He's fine. 
You know how he hates those hospitals. I'm sure he hates dead a lot more. You know, my pap don't seem seem like he cared if he died. I don't want to die for a long time. Moon, I'm tired. I'm not. This is the best bed I've ever slept in. I'm not tired. Stay up and talk to me. Tell you what, let's go to sleep and I'll show you that chainsaw tomorrow. That sounds good to me. I'll stop talking now.